Hey guys, hope you're doing good today. Let's take a look at the term ETL, which has become very common nowadays. ETL stands for Extract, Transform and Load. Just as the name implies, the process extracts data from homogeneous or heterogeneous data sources, transforms the data for storing it in proper format or structure for querying and analysis purpose and then it loads it into the final target the database more specifically operational data store data mart or the data warehouse etl systems commonly integrate data from multiple applications typically developed and supported by different vendors or hosted on separate computer hardware extract the first part of an etl process involves extracting the data from the source systems. In many cases, this represents the most important aspects of ETL. Since extracting data correctly sets the stage for the success of subsequent processes. Most data warehousing projects consolidate data from different source systems. Each separate system may also use a different data organization and format. Common data source formats include relational databases, XMLs, and flat files, but may also include non-relational database structures such as information management system or other data structures such as virtual storage access method or indexed sequential access method, or even formats fetched from outside sources by means such as web spidering or screen scraping. The streaming of the ext extracted data source and loading on the fly to the destination database is another way of performing ETL when no intermediate data storage is required. In general, the extraction phase aims to convert the data into a single format appropriate for transformation processing. An intrinsic part of the extraction involves data validation to confirm whether the data pulled from the sources have the correct values in a given domain, such as a pattern or a default list of values. If the data fails the validation rules, it is rejected entirely or in part. The rejected data is ideally reported back to the source system for further analysis to identify and to rectify the incorrect records. In some cases, the extraction process itself may have to modify a data validation rule in order to accept the data to flow to the next phase. Transformation In the data transformation stage, a series of rules or functions are applied to the extracted data in order to prepare it for loading into the end target. Some data do not require any transformation at all. Such data are known as direct move or pass-through data. An important function of transformation is the cleansing of data, which process aims to pass only proper data to the pro target. The challenge when different systems interact is in the relevant systems interfacing and communicating. Character sets that may be available in one system may not be so in others. In other cases, <clears throat> one or more of the following transformation types may be required to meet the business and technical needs of the server or data warehouse. For example, selecting only one, only certain columns to load, or selecting null columns not to load. Translating coded values, for example, if the source system codes male as 1 and female as 2, but the warehouse codes male as M and female as F. Encoding free form values, for example, mapping male to M, deriving a new calculated value, for example, sales amount is equal to quantity multiplied by unit price, sorting, order the data based on a list of columns to improve search performance aggregations, generating surrogate keys, splitting a column into multiple columns, Converting a comma-separated list 
specified as a string in one column into individual values in different columns. Another transformation can be that disaggregation of, represent, of repeating columns into a separate detailed table. For example, moving a series of addresses in one record into single address in a set of records in a linked address table. Another transformation can be that to look up and validate the relevant data from tables or referential files for slowly changing dimensions. Applying any form of data validation, failed validation may result in a full rejection of the data, partial rejection or no rejection at all, and thus none, some or all of the data are handed over to the next step depending on the rule design and exception handling. Many of the above transformations may result in ex exceptions, for example, when a code translation parses an unknown code in the extracted data. Load. The load phase loads the data into the end target that may be a simple delimited flat file or a data warehouse. Depending on the requirements of the organization, this process varies widely. Some data warehouses may overwrite existing information with cumulative information. Updating extracted data is frequently done on a daily, weekly or monthly basis. Other data warehouses or even other parts of the same data warehouse may add new data in a historical form at regular intervals, for example, hourly. To understand this, consider a data warehouse that is required to maintain sales records of the last year. This data warehouse overwrites any data older than a year with new data. However, the entry of data for any one year window is made in a historical manner. The timing and scope to replace or append are strategic design choices dependent on the time available and the business needs. More complex systems can maintain a history and audit trail of all changes to the data loaded in the data warehouse. As the load phase interacts with the database, the constraints defined in the database schema as well as in triggers activated upon data load apply, for example, uniqueness referential integrity mandatory fields, which also contribute to the overall data quality performance of the ETL process. Here is, an Here is an ETL process including a staging area, which is a common practice in the industry. As discussed in the previous video, data is first collected from multiple sources, brought into a common staging area, and then is cleansed and loaded into the final data warehouse. Generally, data is extracted and cleansed and then loaded into the staging area. First without any transformations. That is why you can see the big red E under the first ETL job. This is also referred to as data being dumped into the staging area. This can be thought of as an intermediate temporary database. Then from here on the business, ru business rules are applied to the data and it is transformed further cleansed and loaded into the final target. Hence the big red T and L under the second ETL job. From the data warehouse, data is transferred to data marts. Then the BI and reporting tools come in the picture and provide reports for the end users. Hope you have a better understanding of the ETL process now. Thank you for joining us today. Bye bye.